Hey, what's up guys? Vega here from Serpent X Special Forces, and AMD announced today their Zen 3 CPU lineup. And I'm actually excited for what they can provide to the gaming community as a whole. Now, in this video, I want to focus on just providing the basic information that we should all be aware of of these CPUs as well answer the question or provide some insight on whether or not your motherboard like a B450 or X470 will be able to support it. That's the biggest question especially for me. But Lisa Sue and her AMD team have really been taking it to Intel providing great price to performance as well as multi a multitude of cores compared to Intel's offering. Now the price did go up by about $50 compared to previous generations but it leaves the door open for their second generation and third generation to be available on the market depending on your budget. So you'll be able to build a $400 system, a $500, $600, all the way up to whatever you want at a really decent price. Spec wise, we're looking at the 5950X being the top of the stack with 16 core 32 threads and a boost clock of 4.9 gigahertz but keep in mind that is not well all core and that's really what you want to focus on what is the all core overclock and I challenge everybody to always wait for reviews before you make a buying decision next up is the 5900X which is a 12 core 24 thread and has a boost clock of 4.8 gigahertz uh, it has a 70 megabyte uh, L2 and L3 cache, and then we have the 5800X, 8 core, 16 thread, 4.7 gigahertz boost, and only 36 megabytes of cache. Um, now, all three of those that I just mentioned, it's stating that it's about 105 watt TDP, but we can't measure that because the TDP measure between Intel, NVIDIA, and AMD are completely different things. So this is where the independent testing comes into play. But my favorite to look out for is going to be the 5600X, 6 core, 12 thread, 4 point gigahertz boost, only 1 megabyte less than the 30, uh, 5800X, and a 65 watt TDP. So that's going to be the the replacement for the 3600 and 3600X great budget performance CPU. Matter of fact, I have a system that I built not too long ago that I meant to release the video. I may just do that here within the next couple weeks because the 3600 just, it just got it. It's got that middle range. It's a great price to performance. It helps people save money and build a great gaming system. Pricing wise, we're looking about 800 bucks for the top of the stack, the 5950X, 550 for the 5900X, 450 for the 5800X, and 300 for the 5600X. Now again, that's about $500 more than its previous generation or family of processors, the 3000 series, so to speak. Everything else is gonna be pretty much the same. Mounting, mounting mechanism, uh, you'll be able to use your B550 and your uh, X570 boards, but what about the B450 and, fi and, and you know, 470? Well, I know this naming nomenclature can kind of be a little bit uh, confusing, but Steve uh, got some information, and there's a key number that I want you to pay attention to if you're trying to answer the question, will my motherboard support? And that's a GISA 1080. Uh, let me explain. I have in my media system the Asus Tough B450M Plus gaming motherboard. The latest BIOS I have was released on 7-17-2020, but it's only a GISA 10-06, so it does improve uh, stability, memory performance, um, and maybe open up the capability to run higher memory depending on the, the, the compatibility but it doesn't support Zen 3. And Asus even released uh, revisions or refresh of the B450 motherboards that do support Zen 3. But in my eyes, why would I spend money for a revised motherboard that does support Zen 3 when I can just go and get a B550 or X570? So that's kind of where I'm at right now. Whether or not your motherboard is gonna support it is a question that nobody, not even myself, can say 100% definitely yes or no. The problem with that is, is for example, MSI confirms Zen 3 support on AMD 4000 series chipset motherboards. So 
they're saying that it will support it on motherboards including non-Mac SKUs that have only 16 megabytes of EEP ROM. And then their Mac SKUs that have over 32 megabytes of EEP ROM will receive Zen 3 support painlessly, meaning the board may retain support for some, if not all, older processors and generations. The EEP ROM is what your BIOS is loaded onto. And if your motherboard doesn't have enough megabytes, then what can happen is, is even if you're able to upgrade to Zen 3, it's not going to be, it's going to have to erase some data to where it's not compatible with older generation CPUs. So some other boards won't be able to upgrade one because they may not have uh, enough uh, megabytes in the EEP ROM. And then some other boards will be able to upgrade, but they won't be able to support all generations of CPUs. Now you may be like, well, what's the big deal? I don't care. I just want Zen 3. Okay. Well, the best thing for you to do is to keep an eye on your manufacturer, your motherboard manufacturer's main website and keep up to date with their uh, BIOS revisions. Sometimes they'll even put it on Twitter. So for me, with my ASUS uh, Tough B450M Plus Gaming, I have to keep an eye and hope that they'll release a BIOS revision soon. And with November 5th around the corner, almost one month from now, the bad thing is, is I may not be able to do it until January 2021. January 2021 is where, uh, well, at least the date we have been giving in the gaming community that a BIOS will be available for those B450 uh, type motherboards. X470 may be the same or a little bit different, but long story short, if you get your CPU on day one and you go to plug it into your motherboard but it won't boot, that may be a problem. Now, AMD is doing the same thing they did in the past, where if that's the case, they will leave, uh, provide you a loaner CPU. And that, what I mean by that is in the past, when I built a, uh, a new uh, system, it was only supported Ryzen 1000, so it went to go boot into the 2000 series CPU. It wouldn't boot. They actually sent me a loaner CPU to where I could boot, flash the BIOS, and then go ahead and, and swap that out and keep it going. I sent the CPU back. That same program is going to be active during this launch. But to me, that's a huge inconvenience. The positives is, is that we can expect these CPUs to be a powerhouse when it comes to benchmarking. As far as gaming, I am a little bit concerned because I don't think it's going to be as high as we want it to be, at least challenging in the, if you're an FPS, you know, master and you want the very most, the very best, that you can get, then it may not be able to do as good as a 10900K, but it should be on its heels or close to. Really, these AMD CPUs just provide you the best budget to performance that you can get with the improvements in instructions per clock. Maybe we might see a changing of the guard, but I don't think it's gonna beat the 10900K, so don't get your hopes up yet. Don't expect it to hit five gigahertz, or excuse me, 5.4, 5.2, 5.3 gigahertz very easily, especially on air cooling and AIO. You definitely probably gonna have to do liquid nitrogen uh, to get to those levels, but it should give Intel a run for its money at the top of the charts on 1080p gaming benchmarks. Because uh, as you can see here on the one that we have on screen, the 3700X, look how far down the stack it is compared to the other Intel. Uh, CPUs and that's because of IPC instructions per clock so if AMD can challenge in that arena but still give us this great price to performance that we've been loving so much from this new AMD Ryzen lineup it will be a good CPU but let me know your thoughts about the AMD launch below I want to hear you sound off um, I'm gonna hang tight I can't do anything unless I get a new motherboard. If I do have to get a new motherboard, I'm going to go with the, the latest generation B550, uh, X570, or if there's something new coming out, I don't believe there is, at least from uh, my understanding, rather than get a revision of the B450 board that I already had that supports Zen 3. I, I don't find that as a, as a good deal. but. Keep an eye on your manufacturer's websites. Look for the BIOS. Remember, a GISA 1080 is what you're looking for. If you have a GISA 1080 in your BIOS update, then your motherboard will support Zen 3. That's the key there. And hit the like button on the way out, guys. Subscribe for more content like this, and I'll hit you guys up later. You have a great week.